Hi everyone, this is Marika Kanon, Marketing Communications Manager from Royal AVB. Welcome at our webinar of today where we will take you through the entire story how to elevate your dairy products using clean label Etenia. Um, we have a lot of things to cover today, so I'll quickly uh, take you through the agenda. And I'm going to do that right now. First of all, I will give a brief introduction regarding AVB, uh, something about the, the farmers' cooperation that we are, something about uh, our background, where we come from, uh, and everything that we do with the humble potato. After that, my colleagues will take over regarding the top trends into dairy and the main challenges in creating delicious dairy products, followed by case studies. How do you take out, for example, milk fat and milk protein and replace it with potato ingredients? How can we tackle issues, for example, regarding the uh, cost efficiency or sustainability aspects? These things will be covered in the case studies. And then finally, we will round up with the polling questions and the Q&A and talk you through the results of the polling questions that we will have in between this webinar. Um, I'm not doing this alone, so I will go to the next slide. Um, here you see my wonderful colleagues. I'm really excited to introduce them to you. First of all, Akalin Vermu, Strategic Marketing Manager within AVB, and Malek Nurtuzun, Second Manager within AVB. Welcome both. Uh, some housekeeping points to get over. Um, yeah, you see a resources panel on the left of your screen. Here you can find the PDF of this presentation. Here you can see the videos that we display in between. We will have uh, some recipes available to take a look at. And so everything that we made available is in the resources folder. Um, if you experience any technical issues during this webinar, please uh, put it in the Q&A tab and our technical team can take a look at it. Um, sometimes it can help already to refresh your screen. So I would always suggest first refresh your screen. If it doesn't work, uh, put it in the Q&A tab and our technical support will help you out. Okay, let's first take a quick peek at our video about AVB. This is not a potato. It's food. It's energy for a billion people a day. It's food for all kinds of animals. It's starch, it's protein, it's fibers, it's desserts, dairy and cream cheese. It's dry mortar, it's packaging, it's even glue. It's jobs. It's a symbol of more than 2,000 farmers and 1,300 staff working together to solve a problem the world and our customers are asking for. It is a symbol of the future of new horizons, and not just because it can grow on Mars. It's a symbol of a plant-based future, a cleaner future that is genuinely sustainable with less waste, fewer emissions, and less water usage. A future with healthier ingredients, zero additives, and more food from the soil. Grown for all those people around the world that are touched by what we do. And soon, many more as we accelerate and strengthen our goals and create value for everyone we work with and for. A potato? It's so much more than that. Together, we make it possible. AVB, innovation by nature. Yes, we touched already upon several topics within the video we just saw about AVB and the humble potato. Um, but since 1990, we've been a farmer-owned cooperative. And that basically means that we are taking the everything about the humble starch potato uh, we, from really the breeding part until the final ingredients, which we supply to the market, we control the entire supply chain. Um, because we culture our own potato breeds, nurtured by our 2,200 farmer members, both in Netherlands and in, the, in Germany, uh, we control really all characteristics of the potato. So pure potato starch, protein and fibers are the end ingredients that we supply. Um, yeah, our potatoes, they form really the foundation of our top quality products. Uh, we use these uh, in, in, or we supply these to the food, the pet food and the industrial segments worldwide. Uh, our customers are really from all over the world. They use it in different um, uh, 
end products, think uh, like delicious dairy or plant-based foods or even pet food or industrial uh, segments such as sustainable packaging or building. Um, I would like to highlight here on the bottom below on the slide, you see our innovation center. It's in the north of the Netherlands, in Groningen. And in the innovation center, we really co-create with our customers uh, to create the most delicious products. Here, we really have the opportunity from a lab scale to a, to a pilot plant to test and to make really the, the perfect end products uh, for our customers. Our reach knows uh, no bounds in that uh, respect. Now I would like to continue uh, to my colleague, Matt of Akaline. Uh, within the upcoming minutes, Akaline will share all the latest trends within the, in, in the dairy segment. Uh, so she will talk us through the market development and the market trends. Akaline, the floor is yours. Well, thank you, Marika, and thank you all for joining this webinar. Within the upcoming uh, minutes, I will guide you through some market developments and some top trends related to dairy. When we look at the dairy market on a global perspective, here is visible what the real uh, retail uh, value is within the total dairy market. You see it's a large market and also the outlook uh, towards the upcoming years 2028, there is an estimated yearly growth rate of almost 7%. And when we deep dive into the segments, it really showcases here as well that milk is really the biggest segment with a value share of almost, well, more than 40%. And it's also having a, an annual growth rate of 6.8%. A very good and big second segment are the yogurts with a value share of 28% and also an, uh, an annual growth rate of 6.9%. Together, these two segments are representing almost 69, or not almost, representing 69% of the total value of the dairy market. Um, we all know that plant-based dairy is also a very uh, innovative and also very uh, um, growing and market which is very uh, in the news uh, uh, lately and also the previous year. Uh, I, so therefore, I would really like to make the comparison between the global dairy market and the global plant-based dairy market. You see the difference is very large. Um, um, plant-based dairy compared with the dairy market, it is still a niche market. But on the other hand, we also have to uh, know that also the plant-based dairy market, it is just represented by two segments, the milk and the yogurt. And within a global dairy, it is a very mature market and are much more segments uh, connected to, uh, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, segment. So that is not really a equal comparison, but it's just to uh, emphasize a little bit or showcase a little bit what the outlook is. When we then deep dive one other uh, area further, you see here the regions are also representing uh, the dairy, global dairy market. You see NAM and AU is really, uh, the larger uh, regions for uh, for dairy, it is representing 42% of the global market and having a, a global annual rate of almost 5% for the upcoming five years. But we saw that the total global market is growing by almost 7% a yearly. So that has to come from uh, certain uh, markets and that is really the um, uh, upcoming uh, market. It's the EMEA and the Latin America. They are currently rep representing 20% of the market and they will really grow on the significant higher level. They will grow with 12%. Uh, so that's a little bit of uh, some insights related to the market growth and the market size of, uh, of dairy. When we then look a little bit more towards the new product launches, which have done lately uh, in the 2020, you see here the new product launches <clears throat> within dairy represented by the segments which we are showcased here. And you see that um, plant-based ice cream and also the ambient uh, desserts are really the, the hardest growing uh, segments within new product launches are um, brought to the market in 2022 versus 2019. You see also that the dairy-based ice cream and also the spoonable dairy yogurt are the biggest segments within uh, the new product launches. But I do want to emphasize that when a segment is declining, that does not mean that also the number of new product launches is also declining. Because this is just the, well, the, the share of the new product launches within a segment. 
So in total, for instance, the spoonable dairy yogurts can grow in number, but it's declining due to the segment that there are other segments who are more growing uh, relatively. When we then look towards the new product launches and the clean label um, uh, features or the clean label claims on, on pack, you see here that the spoonable dairy yogurt, which is like we saw in the previous slide, is the second uh, segment for new product launches. One out of three has a clean label claim on pack. So it's really that there is a, uh, a majority, it's, it's really a, a high number of, uh, of product with a clean label on pack. So it's really reflecting uh, and fitable in the market. When I look then towards the new product launches and you look towards a, a texture which is on pack, creamy is really the widely used texture claim in the dairy launches. You can see that also by region in AU, um, it's almost 10% of the new product launches within dairy has a creamy texture claim on pack. In North America, it is almost 8% and Asia is a little bit lower by just uh, 3%. So, you see here also North America and Europe are really uh, comparable with each other towards a creamy texture claim. Uh, then something, uh, a few slides towards the consumers and their attitude and behavior towards uh, dairy. But when we look at more a general perspective, consumer behavior towards foods, well, we all know that consumer care about what they eat and how it is produced and the impact on the environment and society. But we also really have to keep in mind that consumers do not behave in a comparable way and they're really different in the way they make decisions. So that is really um, the, uh, the, the key out here that people do uh, uh, change uh, in their behavior and also uh, uh, it's not comparable with each other. Um, there is an, uh, research, a research of, uh, of Innova, which really shows uh, in which uh, the, the consumers have been uh, requested and which claim has the most influences on your uh, purchasing decision when you're buying dairy uh, products and they were able to select their top five. It is very clear that real ingredients is a very important uh, aspect for people, for the consumers when they are buying their dairy products. Um, and also real ingredients is also reflecting to that clean label uh, um, claim which we already talked about. Uh, other research is also showing that when they are um, requested towards their key reasons for maintaining their uh, dairy consumption, also uh, natural ingredients is number three mentioned within these types of, uh, of uh, research. So real ingredients and natural is really important for people why they are choosing uh, or why why they are choosing uh, uh, that type of uh, dairy they would like to consume and also by consuming and uh, well keep consuming uh, dairy products taste and flavor is really number one product attributes when they uh, purchase the spoonable yogurt so the previous one was really regarding total dairy and when we look towards uh, spoonable yogurt which is the second segment within the category, it is really uh, um, the taste and flavor. And when you look then towards number one segment, so that was the milk, it is more cost oriented. When you look um, towards an, uh, an uh, well, we have seen an, an research we have uh, done regarding consumers. Uh, when we ask consumers what of the following ingredients uh, are most uh, comfortable with when they appear in a, in a beverage or in a, in a dairy-like product, uh, starch is really a deep preferred ingredient in dairy uh, and it really can um, create great tasting products, but Malik Noor will uh, guide you through that later. But starch for 50% of the consumer, starch is really an ingredient they prefer to look back in their um, dairy products. And gelatin is just one of the products which is less preferred or almost not preferred. Just by 5% five, five of the consumers, they uh, see it uh, uh, likely in their dairy product. More a little bit towards sustainability. And we all know that um, health of the planet is really important for consumers currently, and they really uh, affecting the uh, the way of people are purchasing their food. And when we really uh, focus then on dairy products, 
73% uh, of the consumers find re uh, sustainability claims very important when they choose their uh, dairy uh, product. So that is really saying something. And dairy brands can really provide uh, the story behind the formulation to um, reassure that consumers buy products that are uh, ethical and, and uh, environmentally friendly. And also the potato is a very sustainable ingredient and it really makes a perfect match with, uh, with dairy. But Melak Noor, my colleague, will also guide you and tell you more about it during her case studies. This was it from my side, but now I hand over back to Malika. Thanks, Ekeli. Um, yeah, for the wonderful audience at the other side, now it's really um, your chance to have a say. Uh, we have the first polling question. Which top two aspects do you currently take into account when developing or reformulating dairy products? Is it taste and texture? Is it cost? Is it health? And then uh, in addition to fibers or protein, natural ingredients slash clean label, or is it health in addition to low fat? So which top two aspects do you currently take into account when developing or reformulating dairy products? What is most important? Is it taste and texture, cost, health, and then in addition to fiber or protein, natural ingredients slash clean label, or is it health and then in addition to low fat? Just take some, a couple more sex, uh, seconds. I see already the first answers dropping in. Uh, so. Take a look at the question and at the, the, the different aspects that you can choose from. Hit the submit button. I will wait for a couple more seconds. And then I would like to continue. Mel, can you now uh, really take us through the, uh, how we address the, the, the trends and the insights, the market data, uh, what our customers looking for it was just addressed by Akaline. And Mel, can you take us really through what are the main challenges in uh, creating delicious dairy products and how can the potato play a role? Thank you very much, Marieke, and thank you, Akaline, for guiding us through the consumer needs. And uh, we wanted to start with the challenges of the manufacturers with this slide. And uh, you can also remember the drivers for the uh, consumer uh, consumer needs in the products are really based on healthiness, clean label, taste, texture, indulgence, and of course, the awareness on the sustainability. Uh, so what we see is that traditional dairy consumer demand is really here to stay. And the challenges of the manufacturers are based upon some needs, based on like, uh, for example, cost challenges, uh, thanks to our nowadays uh, increasing prices and the fluctuation of the raw materials. There is a huge uh, complexity and also there is some uh, issues with the availability of the ingredients. And at the same time, um, as Akaline mentioned, the safety and the quality is really key for consumers. And the challenge is that to ensure the quality, ensure taste and texture uh, with the clean labeling. And um, protein replacement, with the same mouthfeel, same texture uh, metrics, and with the same uh, uh, attributes is really difficult. And also fat replacements remain in creaminess and the, uh, and the uh, mouthfeel uh, is also again a hurdle for the manufacturers. And uh, what we see, of course, is one of the food industry's biggest challenge is to really improve their environmental uh, impact. So the sustainability is really key. And uh, if, if we look specifically into the dairy industry, processing hurdles is one of the uh, key challenges for the manufacturers. So how can we really uh, overcome these challenges with the uh, potato ingredients? Uh, so it is, is, uh, it's like you see potato, we see potential because uh, ABB potatoes um, are really high quality in terms of uh, um, sensory properties, label friendliness, and sustainability. As ABB, we are producing proteins, starch, and fibers out of potatoes, and all of these have unique functionalities. They are high quality ingredients. Especially potatoes are really sensorially friendly for dairy because they have a neutral taste in the end product, and at the same time, it has a white color. And uh, it is highly sustainable, at the same time, our potato ingredients are GMO-free and there is no need to label as an allergen. 
And uh, let's go even a bit further with the capabilities of these ingredients that we obtain from potatoes. Um, the proteins have the unique functionalities in terms of uh, emulsification and forming, especially used in the plant-based products. But when we then think about the starches, is one of AVB's, of course, uh, know-how, AVB, AVB's know-how for long, long years and innovations keep coming, we can provide the gelling texture and gelling functionality, both thermoreversible or irreversible. And this is really a key unique function. At the same time, of course, what would you expect from the starch is to give this thickening, or if there is an after processing for the end product, like uh, baking or heating, uh, starch can also play a key role in melting, for example. And that's why when we are providing texture to the dairy industry, it is always for us coming together with the right appearance, right mouthfeel. So texture is never alone. So how can we make it even more dedicated to the dairy industry? It is with Atenia. Atenia is a multifunctional clean label texturizer for creamy dairy products. Let's understand how the uh, Atenia is produced. Uh, first of all, Atenia is based on potato starch, so therefore potatoes, uh, as we mentioned, highly sustainable. And at the same time, uh, potato as a source has this neutral taste and at the same time white appearance. So thanks to these useful attributes, potato starch from the potato is already uh, very good in terms of uh, these texturizing properties and high gelling power. And this is also helping with the stability of the uh, products. And uh, it is also this neutral taste. In the end, you don't need to really mask anything, uh, mask any taste coming from the texturizer. So when AVB produced Atenia via potato starch, it is very unique in terms of multifunctionality, like texturizing and gelling. And this is really useful for uh, dairy products because it is uh, providing this rich, creamy uh, uh, eating experience. At the same time, it is a clean label product that can replace milk fat and protein or hydrocolloids together with maintaining the required known familiar textures. The texture is really flexible, so we can uh, uh, differentiate with the textures and it is really easy to use. So therefore, uh, Athenia uh, is a solution for texturizing and gelling uniquely coming from a potato starch. It is clean label. It is providing texture improvement with easy to use aspects like easy dispersibility. And it is even improving mouthfeel and creaminess of the dairy products. Let's even go further and understand how AVB innovated Atenia. We are starting from potato starch and thanks to amylomaltase enzyme reaction, we are cutting amylose and adding it to the amylopectin. And in the end, what we have is an extended amylopectin chain. And thanks to this extension, there is a unique melting mouth profile. So it is really helping with the fat mimetic uh, capabilities. And then this amylopectin type of hydrocolloid is very similar to uh, the behavior of gelatin-like functionality. However, it is derived from potato starch. And this gel is thermoreversible. And it is free from allergen labeling. And uh, this thickening and gelling is really unique to clean label Atenia. Now, um, we will go into case studies in the coming slides, and we will try to explain you in the best way uh, all of these capabilities and functions of Athenia. I would like to show you now the texture grid. And of course, the product's applications are not really limited to what you see here, but uh, with differentiating the dosage of Athenia, we can think about different textures, like starting from drinkables, like drinkable yogurts, or spoonable products, those are like set or stirred yogurt and Greek yogurt. And there are uh, some desserts like puddings. Or we can even produce and provide the smooth spreadability to spreadable products. Uh, for example, a cream fresh cheese type of product. 
uh, which is produced on a yogurt line. So it means that there is no separation and uh, it is really unique. We will go into direction, uh, we will go into details and then we can also think about spreads, but from the way, separated way. So uh, all these um, um, functions and key use of Athena, we'll, we will go into details thanks to case studies. And now let's watch the video about these textures, how they look like. And uh, here is the video, Athena in Clean Label Dairy. Yeah, we just saw and heard Mel already talking about the, the functionalities of the potato and in specific our potato product, Etania. Um, today we uh, designed some case studies with uh, questions that topics that we address a lot with Etania. The first one is really into cost-effective dairy. Uh, how can you take the milk, fat and protein out, replace it with potato ingredients and create, for example, fresh cheese from a yogurt process? The other one is milk fat replacement, really, um, how do you take the, the milk fat out and still create delicious yogurt with great taste, creaminess, all the characteristics that our consumers are looking for. The, the second case study will dive into the easy processing with a multifunctional potato starch. And the third one, and it's also not an, an unimportant factor, I would say, is really how to embrace sustainability with unexpected potato power. So Mel, can you, can you take the floor? Okay, thank you very much, Marieke. Let's go into the case studies to um, inform you better about Athenia. Athenia's cost effectiveness in dairy is uh, one of the general topics that we would like to highlight today. The challenge of the manufacturers is that the cost and the complexity of raw materials uh, is really significantly impacting the dairy production. And at the same time, with these ingredients, uh, who, uh, which has the uh, unexpected availability issues or fluctuating prices, uh, really affecting the um, time, affecting the profitability and competitiveness of dairy manufacturers. Atenia is one of the good solutions that you would think about because it can really work in the existing processes and it can replace meat protein, fat or hydrocolloids or modified starches in your product. And it is label friendly and it can enable major cost savings. With Atenia, there will be a stable pricing at the same time, there will be no availability issues. So, what are the benefits of Athenia? The cost saving opportunities uh, with Athenia is with 1% of it, you can replace 1% milk protein. And with 1% Athenia, you can replace 3% milk fat. And again, with 1% Athenia, you can replace approximately 0 0.5 gelatin. And these are all for the same texture functionalities. 
Of course, we can differentiate on textures uh, because if you would like to use a you know low viscosity system or if you would like to increase it, so texture and gelling for mouthfeel enhancement and added fat-like qualities is possible with Atenia. Let's really go into details with all these calculations and show you some other case studies about them. The other case study we have today is milk protein replacement. It can be either in yogurts or spreadable products. Um, so, of course, protein is one of the key elements in the uh, dairy. Uh, but it's also one of the most expensive ingredients in the production. It for sure contributes and uh, the sensory and texture, texture properties of their products. But if you are looking for a way to reduce uh, uh, protein, and uh, which can also help you with the cost and at the same time environmental impact, uh, Atenia is a solution for you because Atenia is like an amylopectin type hydrocolate, as we mentioned before, and it is a good alternative to milk protein uh, for the same textural properties, functionalities, and it is the only ingredient that can bind all the way. Uh, what do we mean by that? Is that Atenia can fully utilize the milk into a spreadable format with 100% yield without any separation. How do we do it? So normally, uh, this is a whey binding process. Uh, sorry, this is a yogurt process. And the Atenia, thanks to its binding properties, it is possible to process a fresh cheese from a yogurt process. And uh, usually we add the milk at the beginning and the cream, and there are the required steps like uh, homogenizations and pasteurization kind of steps. And then there is the centrifuge to separate the whey. With Athenia, what we can do is to eliminate the centrifuge separation step. Uh, we do not separate the way we keep it, and then you obtain a fully utilized 100% yield product without any acidic whey waste. So this is at the same time, if you are looking a way to reduce the waste of acidic whey, Athenia can help you with that. And of course, if it is not possible for the process to eliminate this step, Atenia can also help with creating spreadable or drinking products uh, from this separated way. And uh, please do not forget to check our recipe uh, after the webinar for excellent uh, spreadable cream cheese, 100% way binding with Atenia. And if you need more information, you can also contact us. As I mentioned, uh, the way binding in the yogurt line is one thing, and also we can replace 1%, Atenia can replace 1% of protein in the dairy products because it is thermoreversible and um, it can provide thickening and gelling. There is a low process viscosity, so it is very uh, helpful in the process. Uh, the preparation is really easy. You don't really need to add any uh, more um, pre-requirements to your process. It is sheer heat, pressure and pH stable and it fits in all processes. And in the next case study, we will also um, show you a little bit about the milk fat replacement. This is also a way to really uh, uh, think about cost saving opportunities. So the challenge of the industry is um, pr producing healthier indulgent products because consumers are looking for it. And um, the, the challenge is keeping the same quality, keeping the same creaminess, keeping the good mouthfeel, and even the keeping the stability and quality of the product throughout the shelf life. And Atenia is, is the perfect solution because it can replace the milk fat, even with in improving the mouthfeel profile together with creaminess and providing you the good stability throughout the shelf life. So that's why we call it a guilt-free indulgence Let's see a little bit of the benefits. Um, the benefits of Atenia in the milk fat replacement is that better for you because creaminess without additional fat or protein. Uh, we can replace with 1% Atenia, 3% milk fat. Uh, in the end, we are having these good creamy products, nice melting mouth and smooth and shiny textures. Atenia help you with preventing synergies because there is no synergies due to processing at high temperatures. And Atenia will also help you with the improved stability 
and will provide you a good consistency thanks to its water binding what properties and water retention and please do not forget to see our see our recipes uh, after the webinar we have three different recipes for fat replacement in yogurts uh, one of them is for like um, zero percent fat set yogurt again zero percent fat spoonable yogurt and uh, fat reduced greek style yogurt and now uh, i would like to take a pause here to hand over to marieke we will have a um, polling questions Thanks, Mel. Um, okay, so let's dive into the second polling question. Your chance again to have a say. Um, which concept are you most interested in regarding cost saving opportunities with Athenia in dairy? Is it replacing milk protein? Is it replacing milk fat? Two case studies that we just saw. Is it replacing hydrocolloids? Or is it fully utilizing the milk into spreadable cheese without separation? So we are really curious and keen in your interest, like which concept are you most interested in regarding cost saving opportunities with Athenia and dairy? So it's regarding cost saving with Athenia and dairy and is it to replace milk protein, replace milk fats, replace hydrocolloids, or finally fully utilizing uh, the milk into spreadable cheese without separation. So choose one of the four concepts uh, which you are most interested in and hit the submit button. Mel, could you proceed with uh, uh, two more case studies? Thank you very much, Marieke. Looking forward to the results. Let's see now um, how easy to process Athenia. And uh, because we have been talking about uh, it can replace protein, it can replace fat without any changes in the process. So let's really dive into this process uh, opportunities with Athenia. Uh, of course, the challenge is one of the challenges because uh, the, uh, the, the ingredients that food industry and also the dairy industry needs to use, they also come together with various uh, processing hurdles. And it, it's one thing. And at the same time, the other thing is that replacing functionalities of protein or fat is also difficult and scaling up or um, the, uh, you know, the capacity and ensuring sa safety and shelf life, uh, those are all coming together with the processing hurdles, equally important. So that's why it is, it's a must to have a good solution for that. And Athenia is really the new way of texturizing and gelling because it is uh, easy dispersible and soluble. It fits all the processes related to a dairy process. It is stable under harsh processing conditions, uh, which is one of the case for the dairy process, and a, a drop-in solution. Since we have different types of functionalities, like uh, fitting in the processes, thermoreversibility, gelatination, we divided it into three. First, let's start with the ease of process. Athenia is a highly processed tolerant. It's not affected by the shear, heat, pressure, or pH. So here we show a simple yogurt process to um, demonstrate a little bit how does it work. We add Athenia at the beginning, which is not a must, of course. We are flexible with it, but uh, it is stable under homogenization and pasteurization kind of processes, which are required for a typical yogurt or cream cheese. And then after fermentation, and if it is needed a uh, breaking step, then we are going into filling and packaging. And there are no issues with Athenia with, a, with this kind of process. So in the, in the below graph, we wanted to show you, it's not only homogenization or pasteurization, Athenia is stable even under direct steam injection, even under two plate heat exchanger. So, Athenia is not really uh, increasing the viscosity throughout the process. That's really helping us with easy processing. Let's show you this thermoreversibility function better. Thermoreversibility is one of the key functions that Athenia is helping with the products. It is thermoreversible at low use level. You see the gel force is increasing while we are cooling the product. And, at this, and, and then when you apply a high heat, uh, the viscosity drops to zero. So that's how Athenia, upon heating, providing a low viscous solution. And when you are cooling the product, 
the gel and the texture is formed again. And this is also bringing in our minds, like this is very similar to a typical gelatin uh, gelation formation. So the third point of the benefits is about gelatination. Uh, to show you better, we really compared Athenia together with gelatin, approximately 3% gelatin versus 5% Athenia. And Athenia is creating a gel force similar to gelatin in the product. And this gel is highly elastic thermoreversible gel. And it is working uh, relatively low dosages in the products. And the performance is really uh, similar to the, uh, to the gelatin in the dairy applications. To even uh, demonstrate it better, we wanted to add here the pictures of before cooling and after cooling texture. So in the before cooling pictures of this stirred yogurt and set yogurt, you can see that there is a low viscosity. This is the low process viscosity of Athenia. It is not increasing the viscosity. So this makes the processing very easy, especially for a dairy product process. The final texture of the product is only achieved after around 24 hours at chill, chill temperatures, like four degrees. And of course, this is really depending on the application and dosage. And uh, as an example, in the next slide, we wanted to show you the cream cheese texture creation. And here again, before cooling, it is very liquid. But after cooling, you see the gel formation is very spreadable, smooth product that is shiny. And there is also no changes in the taste profile. Again, we need at least uh, 12 to 24 hours at low chilled temperatures to obtain the um, final texture from Athenia. Um, now let's have a video again. Now we will see a video that shows how easy Athenia dissolves and how the texture uh, changes before and after cooling. Uh, I think it will be even better to understand uh, to watch this video now. I hope the video was uh, in insightful and uh, it, it showed how Athenia was easy to dissolve and how the end texture is created after chilling step. And so now let's go into our new case study, new and last case study, which is one of the key topics now for the food industry is about sustainability. Of course, food industry is sharing a big uh, portion of the global greenhouse gas emissions and water consumption, land use and waste generation. And therefore there is a need to reduce our environmental footprint, such as uh, using uh, renewable energy, but at the same time optimizing the supply chain or we can think about new materials. Athenia can help you with embracing sustainability together with its unexpected power. We wanted to, as ABB, we wanted to collaborate with Blonde Consultants, who is an external objective organization. And we really wanted to make an evidence base uh, insight uh, about our products for the environmental impact. Uh, by the way, Blonde Consultant is an international leader in the field of environmental and sustainability research for the agri food sector. Um, so what in the end obtained by the report of Blonde Consultants is that 
Etenia has a better environmental performance than animal protein equivalents. And these animal proteins are generally derived from dairy and high value byproducts like gelatin, proteins and gelatin. So Etenia is better in terms of carbon footprint, land use and water use. Let's see how Etenia is better. This is all fact-based. First of all, uh, Etenia can help the reducing carbon footprint by replacing milk protein or gelatin. In the first figure, you see compared to milk, sorry, you see compared to gelatin. So gelatin is either uh, produced via bovine hide or um, bovine bone. And in the second figure, we see compared to protein obtained from milk or protein from milk powder. So this is for the uh, same texture, providing the same, same texture. And uh, Etenia is far more better in terms of carbon footprint for the same functionality in the product. And in the next table, you can also have a look at how can Etenia help reducing emissions and the total avoided emissions uh, compared to a milk protein in yogurt or cream cheese. Etenia is really helping with around 8% of avoided emissions compared to the same functionality. And for the same functionality in the general, uh, sorry, regular yogurt with gelatin, Etenia is avoiding 2% of the total emissions. And as the last table, we also wanted to have a look in the water and land use. And compared to the uh, animal protein or compared to the uh, gelatin, Etenia for the same texture provision, for the same functionality in two different products for cream cheese and yogurt, is showing uh, when comparing to these products, Etenia is showing a lower impact on both uh, water use and land use. So it's really helping to uh, uh, reduce the emissions, use less water, use less land, and in the end, have a better environmental impact together with embracing sustainability. If you would like to have more information about how Etenia or other ABB products contribute to sustainability compared to some animal proteins or animal dairy products, please do not hesitate to contact us. Now I would like to have again a, a pause to uh, ask Marieke to guide us through the next uh, polling question. Okay, thanks Mel. Yeah, for everyone on the other side, this is the third and final poll, and we are going to address the answers on the on the different polls at the, the end of this webinar. Uh, so let's take a look at the third poll. How important is it to you to use ingredients in your dairy products that help to reduce emissions? Is it very important? Is it somewhat important? Is it not very important? Or is it not at all important? So to sum up, how important is it uh, to you to use ingredients in your dairy products that help to reduce emissions? Very important, somewhat important, not very important or not at all important. So let's wait for some seconds. We see still the answers coming in, which is really nice. I'm really curious, hopefully all of you to see like how important it is. Could be not at all important, could be very important. Just some more seconds and hit the submit button if you are finished to make sure that we see your uh, your vote and take it into consideration at the end. Okay, Mel, if you could summarize the key takeaways of this webinar, we will start. We will conclude with that part and then go to the the Q and A and the results of this poll. Thanks all for voting. Thank you, Marieke. So. As a wrap up, as key takeaways, uh, we wanted to summarize here that Etenia can really tick all the boxes for you. And uh, compared to other ingredients used in dairy, such as modified food starches, pectin, gelatin, uh, skip milk powder or milk protein concentrate or hydrocholates like carrageenan, Etenia 
is uh, really providing the being a plant-based origin, providing you the pricing stability, providing the easy processes, and uh, it is a uh, label friendly, um, being free from allergen labeling and being sustainability, even with added attributes like increasing mouthfeel and creaminess. So let Atenya do the job for you. It, it, can, it can tick all the boxes. And uh, if you would like to collaborate more, we are really looking forward to it. You are invited to explore and taste our solutions for dairy together. Looking forward to having our next steps together. Yes, thank you, Melek Noor, for talking us through the, the nice takeaways that we just saw and all the case studies and uh, Akaline as well for all the trends and the markets inside. Um, now I would like to take a brief look at the polling questions. We see the first one already popping up. We also got uh, several questions in the Q&A box. There is still, if you want to, uh, if you have a question that just popped up, please put it in the Q&A box. And the first polling question, which top two aspects do you currently take into account when developing or reformulating dairy products? Yeah, we see it's really a close call to taste and texture and cost on the other side. Um, we still see also for natural ingredients, clean label 40% and health is at the bottom of the, of the choices. If we take a look at the second polling question, uh, that will appear now. Which concepts are you most interested in regarding cost saving opportunities with Etania in dairy? It's really uh, replacing hydrocolloids. We see it with 44%. It really tops all the answers. And then we have at second place replacing milk fat on the one hand and fully, fully utilizing the milk into spreadable cheese without separation. And then a quick peek at the third polling question. Yeah, how important it is uh, to you to use ingredients in your dairy products that help to reduce emissions. Yeah, we see somewhat important 62%, um, very important 25 and not very important 12. Yeah, I think it also comes back to what we already noticed before and a nice uh, link to your case study, Mel, about uh, the sustainability aspects also of potato ingredients, so Etania. Then let's continue with the questions. Um, I take a look at my screen because we had several ones popping in during the presentations. I would like to start with the first one. Uh, I think this one is for you, Mel. What's the best process for making concentrated Greek style yogurt commercially without straining using milk powder? Um, yes, uh, for that, we I think it's a good starting point uh, if, if if it is okay to check our recipe that is already uh, downloadable, uh, it is called the uh, Greek style yogurt. And uh, starting from there, we can start our collaboration, our partnership. We can help you in the best way uh, to guide you through the best process because Atenia can help you majorly with this application. Yeah, so basically it's... Uh... You're, you would sum up it like take a look at the resources box for the recipe, how to make a delicious Greek style yogurt. And of course, connect with us if you want to have more uh, help or if you have any questions left. Thank you. I uh, will go to the second one. Uh, how can potato starch replace fat? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, I think this question was... Uh... Uh, answered. I hope we were able to answer this question with the information we shared today. It's a little bit thanks to Etenia's amylopectin type of hydrocolate nature. It's uh, because it's multi mouth fat mimetic capabilities. So again, I would suggest to go to our resources and then uh, connect us for further uh, questions. Okay, let's go to the next one. Um, I think this one is for you, Akaline. You show the, the global numbers of the market, uh, like where do we see the growth in which regions, with which products. Um, you show the two largest segments, milk and yogurt within dairy. Uh, but what, those were the largest segments, but what are the fastest growing segments within dairy? 
We cannot hear you. Can you try it once again? Now? Yes. I apologize. Well, thank you for this question, uh, Marika. Um, the largest segment or the segment with the largest growth for the upcoming years, it is sour milk products. And the sour milk products will grow for uh, a yearly growth of 10%. It's still a very, very small uh, segment. And also good to know that it is mainly for the uh, Latin America and also the Asia Pacific region is very important. Okay, thanks. Um, then someone would like to know if Atenia is stable at a high homogenization pressure above 90 degrees Celsius. I think, Mel, you, this is a question for you. Yeah, it's absolutely stable uh, uh, in any uh, pressure or homogenization or temperatures levels. So it's stable. Okay. Um, I think this one you can also answer. Is it possible to work on both protein and fat replacement with Etania in fruit yogurt uh, to obtain some cost savings? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, Etania uh, to replace fat and protein in yogurt application is one of the proven successes for it. So the indulgence positioning at affordable pricing, Etania instead of fat and protein to make it super rich at the same time affordable which would be really preferred by consumers yeah great uh, i'm just looking we got more questions popping in so that's great we still have some minutes left within our hour um concerning production procedure when it comes to adding the starch will this be a critical point um yeah thank you for the question because dispersibility of the starch uh uh, will definitely have a high influence on the functionality. But Atenia, as we show in the video, is really easy to disperse, easy to solubilize. Uh, so there aren't any issues to make it work at all. You, that you won't really care about Atenia's solubility or you won't have any lumping issues you do, that you really care about. Okay. Uh, another one, would Atenia ES work for ambient yogurt or ambient dessert? And I hope I pronounce this well. Yes. Um, for sure it would work. Uh, however, we need to further get in touch with you to discuss the details. Okay, so that's an open invitation to get in touch. Yes, please. <laughs> um, then there will the whey bound cream cheese work the same as traditional cream cheese in New York style baked cheesecake? So the, um, I will repeat yeah, okay. the question. Will, I don't, okay. Did you got it? Will the whey bound cream cheese work the same as in traditional cream uh, cheese in New York style baked cheesecake? Um, it would work with some other support for the key functionalities. So what are the key parameters for your cheesecake? Probably one of them will be bake stability. So we need to fine tune your recipe together with you, um, but it is possible, yes. Okay, I see uh, we got through the questions for now. So if there aren't any questions at the moment, um, I would like to thank everyone on the other side for participating today in our webinar and if you have any questions left of course don't hesitate to reach out to to us um, we will also share our contact details you don't see it here on the screen but we will send it afterwards uh, you can download the presentation in the resources and the recipe flyers and we are more than happy to answer all the questions or help you in any way we can um, so thank you all for joining today and I wish you all a great day from, I think, the three of us. Eh? Have a nice day. Have a nice day.